Putin threatens the West with total nuclear destruction, leaving no chance of survival in the event of a strike, on Russia as he warns his Satan to, and flying Chernobyl missiles, are ready for use in ranting anti-US speech. Putin said that no one in the world in their right mind, would use nuclear weapons against Russia. The West has not threatened a first strike on Moscow, and it is only his officials, and an army of propagandists, who have talked up the use of nuclear weapons in the Ukraine conflict. Putin asked the West to understand, that threats against Russia, are absolutely unacceptable for any potential aggressor. He claimed Russia had practically finished work on the modern strategic weapons, that I have been talking about, and I announced a few years ago. He also repeated that Moscow, may withdraw from the nuclear test ban treaty. This could see Putin unilaterally testing major weapons, likely in the Arctic, as demanded by many of his supporters. Recent reports suggested that the West, suspected a new test in the Arctic on Burvestnik, a powerful missile that can fly for weeks, at a time powered by its own onboard nuclear reactor. In recent days and weeks, Western spy planes have made regular flights towards Navea Zemlya in the Arctic, amid suspicions of a test. Putin boasted two days ahead of his 71st birthday, the last successful test of the Burvestnik, a global range cruise missile with a nuclear installation, a nuclear propulsion system, has been carried out. He also claimed, we have actually finished work on Sarmat, Satan 2, on the super heavy missile. This unstoppable 15,880 miles per hour Armageddon intercontinental missile system, is the size of a 14-story tower block. We just need to finish some of the procedures, in a purely administrative and bureaucratic way, and move on to mass production, and putting them on combat duty, Putin said. And we will do this in the near future. That this directly contradicted the words of his space agency chief who said on September 1st that a 208-ton Satan II has been put on combat duty. There is only evidence of one successful test of this weapon. More than a dozen tests are normally needed before deployment, and Western sources have suggested that the 13 known tests of Burvestnik, dubbed Flying Chernobyl, have all failed. A 2019 test led to the deaths of seven people, who attempted to salvage the crashed top-secret missile. Putin dubbed them national heroes, without explaining details of their deaths. The Burvestnik is viewed by the Russian dictator, as a game-changing doomsday weapon with an unlimited range. It is seen by the Kremlin, as a low-flying stealth cruise missile incapable of interception, by existing Western air defenses, and delivering nuclear warheads anywhere around the globe. Putin has called it a radically new type of weaponry with unlimited range, and unlimited ability to maneuver. The Russian president went public with the weapon in 2018, one of five game-changing missile systems, he claimed were superior to Western models. He argued today that Moscow's mission, is to create a new world, blaming Western hegemony for starting the war in Ukraine, in a ranting anti-US speech. We did not start the so-called war in Ukraine. On the contrary, we are trying to finish it, Putin said during the Valde political forum in the Black Sea resort of Sochi. We are tasked, essentially, with building a new world, he added. Putin said that no one in the world in their right mind, would use nuclear weapons against Russia, and that potential enemies, knew about the nation's nuclear arsenal. In response to a question, the Russian president said he was not ready to declare, whether or not Russia, needed to resume nuclear weapons testing, adding that theoretically we could revoke ratification of the International Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. He said Russia had almost completed work on its nuclear-capable Sarmat Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System, and successfully tested the nuclear-powered, and nuclear-capable Burvestnik strategic cruise missile. Russia has not conducted a test, involving a nuclear explosion since 1990, the year before the collapse of the Soviet Union, but Putin declined to rule out the possibility it could resume such testing. He argued that the leaders of the West, had lost a sense of reality, because of what he cast as Washington's colonial thinking. 
Putin questioned what right the United States had to lecture any other country, and argued that the nation considered itself the only arbiter of truth on the planet. The Russian leader added that the conflict in Ukraine was not a territorial one, and that Moscow has no interests from the point of view of conquering some territories. He claimed that Ukraine has lost more than 90,000 troops since the start of its counteroffensive in early June, and also said that Kiev has lost 557 tanks and around 1,900 armored vehicles. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 unleashed a war that has devastated swaths of eastern and southern Ukraine, killed or injured hundreds of thousands of men, and triggered the biggest rupture in Russia's ties with the West for six decades. The West casts the war as Moscow's biggest strategic blunder since the 1979 Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, and Western leaders say they want to defeat Russia on the battlefields of Ukraine. A Ukrainian counteroffensive has so far failed to yield major territorial success. Putin, though, presents the war as part of a much bigger struggle with the United States, which the Kremlin elite says aims to cleave Russia apart, grab its vast natural resources, and then turn to settling scores with China. The former spies, who wield power in Moscow, have repeatedly warned of the risk of a Russia-NATO conflict as the West's post-Cold War dominance wanes and China rises to superpower status. The speech came as a Russian rocket struck a village cafe and store in eastern Ukraine today, killing at least 50 civilians in one of the deadliest attacks in months, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky and other top officials in Kiev. Zelensky today attended a summit of about 50 European leaders in Spain to drum up support from Ukraine's allies. He denounced the attack in the village of Hraza as a demonstrably brutal Russian crime and a completely deliberate act of terrorism. Presidential Chief of Staff Andriy Ermak and Kharkov Governor Alasinihabov said a six-year-old boy was among the dead, adding that seven other people were wounded. Hraza, which had a population of about 500 before the war, is located in the northeastern Kharkov region. About 60 people were in the cafe, were attending a wake after a funeral, said Internal Affairs Minister Ihor Klimenko, speaking on national TV. According to preliminary information from Kiev, the village was struck by an Iskander missile. Emergency crews were searching the rubble of damaged buildings. Ukrainian prosecutors released pictures showing bloodied bodies, and emergency workers combing through the building's smoldering debris. Hraza and other parts of the eastern Kharkov region were seized by Russia early in the war and recaptured by Ukraine in September 2022. The village is located only 30 kilometers, 19 miles, west of Kupiansk. Zelensky had visited the area on Tuesday to meet with troops and inspect equipment supplied by the West. Earlier today, Russia targeted Ukraine's southern regions with drones. Ukraine's air force said that the country's air defenses intercepted 24 out of 29 Iranian-made drones that Russia launched at the Adza, Mikhailiv and Kurovorod regions. Andriy Reykjavich, head of the Kurovorod Regional Administration, said that an infrastructure facility in the region was struck and emergency services were deployed to extinguish a fire he said there were no casualties. In other Russian attacks on Ukraine in the past day, two civilians were killed in shelling of the southern city of Kherson, and another one died after a Russian strike on the city of Krasnohorovka in the eastern Donetsk region. At least eight people were wounded by Russian shelling, according to Ukraine's presidential office. A Russian strike on a hospital in the city of Burislov, in the Kherson region ravaged the building, and wounded two medical workers, according to the regional administration chief, Alexander Prokhodin. Ukraine, in turn, has struck back at Russia with regular drone attacks across Roman the border. Sterevoit, the governor of Russia's Kursk region that borders Ukraine, said that Ukrainian drones attacked infrastructure facilities in several areas, resulting in power cuts. Sterevoit also said that Ukrainian forces fired artillery at the border town of Rilsk, 
wounding a local resident, and damaging several houses. At the summit in Granada, Zelensky asked for more Western support, saying that Russian terror must be stopped. Russia needs this, and similar terrorist attacks for only one thing, to make its genocidal aggression the new norm for the whole world, he said in a statement, posted on his Telegram channel. Now we are talking with European leaders, in particular, about strengthening our air defense, strengthening our soldiers, giving our country protection from terror, and we will respond to the terrorists. The key for us, especially before winter, is to strengthen air defense, and there is already a basis for new agreements with partners, he told the group, which was formed in the wake of the invasion in February last year. Zelensky noted that the summit will also focus on joint work for global food security and protection of freedom of navigation in the Black Sea where the Russian military has targeted Ukrainian ports after Moscow's withdrawal from a UN-sponsored grain deal designed to ensure safe grain exports from the invaded country's ports. He insisted that Putin's attempts to divide the West would not cease. Zelensky also emphasized the need to preserve the European unity in the face of Russian disinformation and to remain strong amid what he described as a political storm in the United States. Russia will attack by information, disinformation, by fakes, etc., he said. Support from Europe has become all the more important after the U.S. Congress hastily sent President Joe Biden legislation over the weekend that kept the federal government funded, but left off billions in funding for Ukraine's war effort that the White House had vigorously backed. Asked if he was worried that support for Ukraine could falter in the U.S., Congress, the Ukrainian president stressed that his visit to Washington last month made him confident of strong backing by both the Biden administration and Congress. Zelensky also called for additional air defense system for Ukraine, additional artillery and shells, additional long-range missiles, and drones for our soldiers, as well as additional formats of support, and security guarantees for nations threatened by Russia to help protect Europe from potential aggression by Moscow. Rishi Sunak met with Zelensky at the summit in Granada. The Prime Minister yesterday urged Western allies to continue arming Ukraine to repel Russia's invasion, at a time when military aid from some countries appears to be in doubt.